This is Sam Christopher, the writer of episode 910, Arcane Wireless. You're listening to The Blacklist Exposed on Golden Spiral Media. The greens, the greens, especially the beans. Welcome back to the award-winning The Blacklist Exposed podcast. Greetings one and all. I'm Agent Troy Heinrichs. And I'm Special Agent Rory. And, you know, Troy, for a second there, I thought I was watching The Sopranos again. And thanks for joining us yet again for number 154 on The Blacklist, Arcane Wireless, written by Sam Christopher and directed by Michael Caracciolo. Show notes and other intel for this episode of The Blacklist Exposed can be found at theblacklistexposed.com. Hey, Rory. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well, Troy. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a while. Uh, Aaron usually it goes has. out of town you know, in March, but for some reason, uh, they made him go walking in Memphis, and apparently he got that joke a hundred times while he was in Memphis this week. <laughs> was he walking with his feet 10 feet off of the ground? Yeah, I know, right? Especially singing a lot of Elvis <laughs> everywhere he went, too. <laughs> the one thing Aaron is not is a hunk of hunk of burning love. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and yeah, that is for sure. He needs that is for sure. Winter, winter, winter packs on a few, right? No, just kidding. <laughs> love you, buddy. <laughs> the camera adds 10 pounds. Exactly right. So uh, what you been up to lately, man? You know, living the dream, you know, trying to survive in this uh, post COVID world. I know, right? It, it, it's it's interesting. We're we're finally at the point of I think we we'll could call it the endemic, because uh, we have mask mandates being lifted here in Illinois. Finally, as of uh, March first. So, how's life there in the uh, closer to New York City over there? Cold. <laughs> Just cold. You guys still wearing masks out there too? Uh, I you know out here really for the most part it's uh, you know pretty optional I guess unless you work you know, in one of the stores and things like that. And they require it. But as far as for us, you know, I'm, I'm vaccinated. So, you know, for me, it's not a big deal. I haven't worn a mask in a while, but I did get COVID, but it was mild at best. Yeah. That's about how I've been here. Thankfully. So what's well, good. Well, I'm glad you're here, man. Filling in again this week. Uh, Aaron will be back next week. Uh, I think we should talk about uh, any Olympic stuff that you watched. You know what I really found that was cool? The mono bob. Interesting. I don't know if you watched that. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, I'm a big bobsledding guy because I think it's kind of fun to watch them, especially after watching, you know, the Jamaican bobsled team. Feel the rhythm, feel the ride. But, exactly. Come on, everybody. It's bobsled time. But I enjoy watching that. And then when I saw mono bob, I was like, this is cool. Even the name is cool because they could have just called it bobsled. But just calling it mono bob just sounded cool. So I had to watch it. Sounds like a transformer. <laughs> it's fun to watch that uh it i don't know if i could do that but it would be fun was this a new sport this year i think mono bob was in, i mean obviously bob split has been around forever but sure. I, this was a new event mono bob well and what makes mono bob different from like uh was it the luge right where you have the one man sled well the luge is on the little sled the bob sleds in the bob sled but the mono bob is just one person normally it's doubles and fours i think yeah, is it like driving a full bobsled or is it like a is it a smaller mini yeah. like space shuttle? It's a little bit smaller, but not much smaller than the one they use, I think, for you know, two people. Man, I can't even imagine like trying to turn that thing just with yourself. I mean, wow. And break. Yeah. And do eighty miles an hour on an ice track that wants to flip you. That exactly. would be funny. <laughs> no, but I just minus the flipping part. I just stuck with my usual. I watched the curling like twenty four seven. Just on in the back. I want to try that. I do want to try curling. I'll be honest. There but you go. It's not a. It's not a thing here. We have axe throwing instead. Yeah, the men's team. Um, obviously, Schuster skipping as as usual. Got down to the uh, what was the semifinals playing against Britain, and Britain was obviously the best team in the world. And it was just like, oh man, it was the the ninth and tenth end for the U.S. Britain game was just fascinating. Fascinating. It's. It's it's such a cool game. I think just strategically, it's a really cool game. And then on top of it, you know, the, all that goes into it, you know, sliding and making it curl and all it. I'd love to do it. I know when people think it's boring, but it's like, no, it's actually like a really it's a really fun and hard sport. Yes, it's strategic. And then imagine I don't know how they slide down the ice like that without busting their butt. 
<laughs> That's true. <laughs> Little- I could just imagine like all the people trying to learn how to do this, just falling and just sitting there with ice packs. Well, after the Olympics ended, we got some pretty big news um, of all places. It was James Spader on the tonight show who announced that season 10 of the blacklist is going to happen. Um, oh, where's my party popper? <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Uh, what, what are your thoughts about going another 22 episodes next year? Uh, I don't know how to feel about this. I, I would normally be excited for it. Uh, I was excited to see what this season would bring, you know, because I'm looking at it, you know, as we've talked about, I'm invested in these characters, you know, regardless of the mythology of the show, which is me, I put to bed at the end of season eight thought come back for a new season nine let's see the direction we go and uh, i'm still skeptical i enjoy the show for what it is so i'm going to enjoy another season of it but i'm curious to see where they go with it yeah it's it's interesting because when we even when the show was new like season one you didn't exactly know what to expect and it felt like a case of the week episode but you had this underlying feeling especially when you come out of the gate going like oh who is red to liz right you you wonder what is going to be the thing that keeps me coming back every single week. And the thing that kept us coming back was, well, how are all of these clues connected? Right. And then you get to, Oh, Tom isn't Tom. And then you get, Oh, Berlin is actually a bad guy. And it spanned over two seasons, right? Cause you had the cliffhanger at the end of season one. Right. And those are the things that I think really keep a network TV show of 22 episodes going forward right because in this day and age it's 10 episodes in streaming or eight episodes in streaming and i think what's also interesting is that the streaming services have even gotten to the point where they don't want to drop the whole season at one time now because you talk about stranger things for a week and then no one talks about it again right they talked about reacher for a week and no one talked about it again and so they're either going to the week by week release kind of like hbo does on a regular basis or they're doing like Maisel, Mrs. Maisel, which is by Rachel Brosnahan, by the way, uh, who was on Blacklist season one as Lucy Brooks. She, um, they're dropping Maisel on Amazon like three episodes at a time, which I think that's the right answer. I like that because you're basically sh- it's a movie, right? It's it's the movie of the week because it's going to go for at least an hour and a half, and, and you have a chance you know? to like write an arc then, right? Because you can have a three episode arc that would actually keep people entertained that could then set up, you know, the sequel to the movie, the ne- you know, the next time the next three episodes drop out. So, right, and it keeps the conversation going. And, and, and it reminds me of the olden days of a uh, TV miniseries where you had like two hours over three nights, you know, the drama to strain comes to mind or the stand. Yes. And I think those were fun. And I, I think that maybe network television hopefully could change that concept next year and do something a little bit different. To keep itself, you know, you uh, really current. just you, you just dated yourself with that reference, you know, right? I I mean, it, it is what it is. <laughs> they were good. They were good. I liked them, especially. especially no, got, I, I agree. The guy that played Randall yeah, Flagg well, in that version of The Strand with Gary Sinise, who's like at the you know business in the front, party in the back, <laughs> hair mullet yeah. with a jean jacket. It was awesome. You know, it, it's just I think you know network television is going to have to find a way to compete with streaming servicing. Yeah, I just it, think that it's taking over. And, and this is like the scheduling thing is interesting, right? Because like we did nine episodes of the blacklist and then went on break for the Olympics. So there's a perfect 13 episodes left, right? That's like the, the old streaming season kind of, you know, sweet spot, if you will. Right. And if you look at the schedule, I think there's, we got 12 episodes left now after this week and there's probably 14 weeks left in the TV season. So I'm assuming there's going to be at least one or two Fridays here. Cause we're back on Fridays, everybody, in case you didn't know. Uh, there's one or two Fridays that will be off, you know, probably Easter, maybe one, one during March for the March madness weekend. Um, right. So would it be not behoove us to have like, okay, here's nine episodes of standalone CSI criminal of the week kind of thing, but then have a really great 12 episode story arc that just drives home what we need to do. And then instead, like, like, and we'll get into it for this week, but it's like, we, we, unless there's a reason for red to do what the things are that red is doing, even though I'm invested in the characters, I don't know if I want a season 10. Yeah. I mean, because we can't see the big picture. 
And, 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 you and, know, we don't know the direction they're going with this. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like you can, you could say it's a two year time jump and reinvent the show. And I'm, I'm all good with that. Like they're like, yeah, it's that's fine. The, the season has been good television. It's better than most stuff you see on TV, especially the end game. Cause the end game is crap and a complete rip off. <laughs> Agreed. Um, Agreed. No offense to any of the actors that, you know, are acting on it. It's just, it's just, it, I've seen this show. I don't need to see it again. And exactly. the, um, the, the power of the blacklist has always been that there's like, why is red doing this? Why does red need this bad guy? And if that connective tissue isn't there, even though that they want to reinvent the show and do more case of the week stuff, which is fine. I think you still need the connective tissue for it to feel like the blacklist. Otherwise it literally becomes NCIS or CSI. Right. Or and something. Exactly. And, and that's the other thing too, going back to when you reference season one, we're watching all these things and we're like, wow, these blacklisters, this is great. And then that one scene where Liz has them all on the floor where she connects all the dots and you're like, oh my God, I didn't even see that coming. That yeah. they were all connected for him to find out what he needed to find out. The whole season was connected. I feel like we're not connected anymore. Exactly. It's a complete disconnect. It's a complete disconnect. And then um, I, I think that, I think this is the challenge, right? Because you, like you, like you said, and everybody knows how I feel. Like season eight was really the answer to the question that we've all been wanting this entire time. Like, how do we lean into that? Because I feel like they're trying not to say that it was answered, even though it was pretty clear. Was. How do we lean into that without, aber- you know, just overtly giving the answer? Right. Like I thought it was sweet. Like uh, was it last uh, Bookman Baptiste? I think it was where they were uh, the two grandfathers reading to their grandchildren uh, the storybooks. Like that kind of stuff is cool because you're like, hey, for the people that get it, like here's a hint, right? But for the right. people that don't get it, they can still be like, oh, isn't it sweet that they're reading to the kids? And they can right. You know, and and we've had this discussion before as far as could the show continue if the mythology ends. And it absolutely could. And I think it absolutely could. I I think this season could have been very much a um, wrestler versus red because he blames red for Liz's death. And you could have had the two of them go at each other for a while. And then we got right. into they the whole that off in 20 minutes. Exactly. And then the same thing happened with Dembe with the, with the envelope. I'm like, well, that could be a really cool story. Like dig into right. how did Dembe get the envelope? Why did, you know, what did Liz do after she got the envelope? And, how does Red feel about the envelope? And does Dembe go into... I mean, there could have been like six episodes. And so they answered that in like 10 minutes as well in the next week. Um, you and, could that, go, and that's the thing. That's the confusing part is because with the blacklist, we always... With the big things, we always had to wait for the answers. They always answered things, but we usually had to wait. And this, they're wrapping everything up in half an episode. Yeah. And, and I think the cool thing would be like, let's tell stories about Katarina's past. You know, who are the people that she you know, ran around with for 20 years. Who are the people that were chasing her for 20 years? I think that would like, like, I think uh, like um, uh, Anton Velov, right? He was this KGB that just completely tracked her down and couldn't find the ghost. You know, what if there was some kind of storyline where um, Anton Velov, well, a bunch of bad people are taking out Red's operation one by one, which has kind of been happening as the course of this season has been going along. We now know why. Right. Um, but as they're taking down these operations, like Red's getting pissed off. Like who's who's attacking me? Who is this person? Right. Same that concept for this year. And then you come to find out that the big bad at the end of the season was Anton Velov's kid. Right. Revenging, you know, you know, the the death of his his or her father for all this time he spent hunting a person that didn't exist, even though she was there in plain sight the whole time. Like that would yeah, be that'd be I, cool I, because then it sticks with the sticks with the backstory and the mythology and things of that nature. But we're not getting that like hint of what is no. the big thing, what is the end game, if you will. <laughs> and that and that yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's the thing too. Like you know, we're referencing NCIS. It seemed like NCIS was week to week case of the case bad guy invested in the characters, but there was always an overlying big bad for the season whether it was half a season or the entire season, there was an always an overlying arc. And on the blacklist right now, we do kind of have, but which one is it? Is it Cooper getting set up for murder? Or is it somebody coming after Red from the inside? Because now they're using the FBI to go after Red. So what's going on? And which one is it? This week in particular, 
nothing about Cooper. Like it's like dropped. Like the nope. story doesn't exist, you know? Right. Versus and like a nugget. obviously it's out there. Like there could be a thing like the, the, the secret caller. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like scary movies? Um, <laughs> maybe he's using an arcane wireless phone. Yeah. Or something like that. You get, tie in a nugget, just a nugget, something that we'd just be able to figure that out. I think that would be, that'd be helpful for us to keep the, the engagement and interest up. Right, because I've seen right. That. Because what's what's next week going to be? I mean, because they don't show highlights, you know, clips anymore. Not that I watch them, but what's next week going to be? Forty five minutes of the Cooper thing, yeah. and we're not going to touch Red and what's going on with Red. Like you have to connect and keep the story engaged somehow in each episode. Something just to remind us what's going on. So before we get into uh, the episode this week, one other uh, thing of business we want to kind of touch on. Um, this is going out to you, all the fans, right? We've been here nine years, nine seasons going strong, covering the show. Um, there are definitely some things in Aaron and my personal lives um, that are a little bit time consuming as of late. And so we wanted to know from all of you for our profiling question for next week. We're toying around with the idea of, you know, do we keep doing the podcast on a week by week basis, episode by episode? Because in, in, here's the thing we're kind of struggling with unless there's a mythology or there's things to theorize or talk about, it makes it very challenging for a podcast like ours to exist, right? Because if we don't have speculation and theories and fan participation and things of that nature, you know, it just becomes like, okay, well, here's what happened on the po- on the blacklist this week. It's a recap episode. And Aaron and I have never yeah. been those types of people to be a recap podcast. We want to dig into the characters. We want to see, are they evolving? Are they staying true to form? Um, you know, what is the music and how does it tie in? And why did they pick that song and all that kind of stuff where it actually adds value to the show. Right. Um, we obviously love the blacklist. We keep watching the blacklist, but we want to make sure that this podcast is worth your time, obviously because it takes us a lot of time to put it together and put it out and post it and all of that fun stuff. So we were toying around with the idea of, what if we were to do like three episodes at a time, right? Like if the streaming networks are dropping three episodes like Mrs. Maisel, and then you could do a podcast about three episodes at once because maybe there would be more of a connective tissue and um, insight to make a podcast worth more conversational topic discussion than just doing the standard week by week thing. Um, so we want right. to know from you. Well, we'll ask you, Rory, since you're here. You know, you've been super fan, right? You did all the clamors back in season yes. two and everything. You know, would oh, you keep listening to the blacklist exposed? Would you keep on being a fan of the podcast if we switched from a you know once a week format to a every three weeks we'd cover off and we do four more podcasts for this year? I mean, either way, I mean, I'm a loyal fan of the podcast first and foremost. So whether it's once a week, twice, you know, twice a month you know, once a month, whatever it is, I'll still always listen just to get insight and connect with everybody else and see what their thoughts, opinions, and feelings are. Uh, I personally, I would be okay with, you know, twice a month, every other week. It seems like, like you said, like an episode like, you know, last night's, how much can you really dig into it? There really wasn't much there. It was more a little character development, Aram focused, you know, how much can we really dig into? There wasn't anything to really go and, and connect back to any part of the season at all. Yeah. And especially as you think about season 10, like, do we like, Oh man, like season nine is it blacklist exposed goes away and we don't cover the 10th and potentially final season. Or do we have this kind of format used for season 10 as well? Right. So it's kind of the things we're, we're trying to think of the future and we want to make sure that this is worth your time as the audience, um, especially the time for the patrons who do support the podcast. Um, so we just like to hear your thoughts. So you can do that at feedback at golden spiral media.com. Again, feedback at golden spiral media.com. Let us know how you feel. We'll put up a poll on Twitter. We'll put up a poll on the Facebook group. Um, just let us know your thoughts because um, we're, we're just curious, you know, if, if everybody's like, no, no, do it week to week. And then, um, you know, we'll, we'll keep doing it week to week because we're, we're here to serve the fans. You know, we're not here to serve us. So just, uh, right. Profiling question for next week, and then we'll we'll give you the results, and we'll let you know when Aaron gets back next week after Aaron and I get a chance to chat and uh, to uh, decipher all the intel, if you will, and mm-hmm. we'll we'll make a decision as we go forward. And remember, just like real life, you can't complain about the results if you don't vote. Correct. So we definitely want to hear from you. So 
you know, thousands of you are still listening to the podcast. Um, we expect to get at least a 10% response. So make sure that you uh, get out there. Feedback at goldenspiralmedia.com. Find the poll on Twitter. Find the poll on Facebook. We'll have them up there shortly after the podcast releases so that we can go from there. Come on. You, you guys are so invested in this show. You're not going to see it to the end. Of course we are. Well, now before the task force accidentally busts up our operation, let's go ahead and get into this week's case profile. Well, this week we're focusing on a baddie known as the seer, a crafty business opportunist that peddles cell phones to bad guys. Not just any cell phones, though, and not even the latest iPhone or the Pixel. I'd really like to like I like the design. Like I kind of want one of those. Uh, I think those were built for commercial use. Exactly right. Exactly right. A little more uh, Panasonic Tough Book related, potentially. Yeah, a little durable. Uh, but they are, no, they they run on a thing called the Arcane Wireless Network, a network so impenetrable, so untraceable, criminals for years have been using it to get away with all kinds of things. The latest criminal showing interest is human trafficking crime lord Odin Internado, which Every time I heard that, I was like thinking like intergalactic from the Beastie Boys. Interdonado, <laughs> interdonado. <laughs> Planetary interdonado. <laughs> He's got operations all over the world. And after a few demonstrations of tech by the seer, interdonado decides to use the phones exclusively. I'm going to say it that way now for the rest of the podcast. Now I can't not hear it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Aram runs into an old mentor this week, F.J. Powell, who we come to find out is applying for Aram's old job over at Greylock. This causes a little bit of jealousy on Aram's part, and he does some digging to find that F.J. is hiding, if not helping, the RK network. Upon confronting him, however, we found out that the FBI are the ones that are actually behind Arcane Wireless, but not in enough time for wrestler and Dembe to take out the seer and bust up a years long operation and millions of dollars in R and D even Mm. bigger though, is that these phones were actually inside of reds network, which is while heady in the cold open, who was peddling pirated soybeans was taken down and busted for the trafficking. And then thankfully heady obviously survives a test from red in prison and she is loyal as can be and sprung and they share in a ritual together in the trailer with red and company. So overall arcane wireless, what say you Rory like this idea, this concept of a, a a black market. You can't find anything phone. Oh, I like the group. The episode was great. You know, as far as they could have done so much more with it, that's just my opinion. But the, the actual network itself was pretty cool. They're going to use that to bust up criminals. They're going to give it to them, telling them it's secure, but the whole time they're actually recording them. Come on. And how would Red ever let something like that slip into his organization? He's I mean, too focused on something else. The seer was actually really crafty. I, I thought the seer had a really great um, command of presence. I thought he yep. had a really great sales pitch. I love the whole bomb threat concept. And he's just like, yeah, that's going to it's going to take this much time for this to happen and this much time for this to happen. And by that, no one's going to yep. show up. <laughs> then when no one yep. shows up, you'll buy my phones. And he's like, yep, I'm going to buy your phones. Anybody want to play cards? <laughs> I solitaire it is. <laughs> I'm more of a euchre guy myself, no, I, being from the Midwest. Yeah. I just learned what that is, thankfully. I know what you're talking about. But you know, the interesting thing was I, I got a, a person of interest vibes off of this. Because remember they had the mesh network. Oh yeah, with the machine. They had and their everything. own phone system. Sure. So I I kind of got that that vibe off of it, which a big person of interest fan myself. So I liked the concept of it. I liked where they were going with it. I liked the fact that they didn't turn it until towards the end of the episode where you figure it out so it played out you're thinking this is real the whole time but this is what the second network what was the other one art attacks network yeah the art that we had before yep Yep. so all these networks are just floating around in the ether i'm glad we're using it to our advantage now at least to go after criminals and not let them use it to get away with it but at the end as, as an episode itself it just fell flat because it didn't connect to anything else yeah, and I think that's the big thing for me was that we got to the the twist and I was like, oh man, the twist. I didn't see that coming. That's pretty good because there was two twists really, right? It was the twist of, oh, FJ, FJ, man, what are you doing? Why are you a bad guy? Like you were a Rom's right. mentor. Like this is not cool, man, not cool. And then you find out that he's not actually a bad guy. He was actually the good guy who created the network in the first place. 
Uh, and, and then and he is actually cool. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> it's, I'm just like, man, this is like such a great, great twist. It's a great hour of television. I was thoroughly entertained the entire time. I think that the yes. the the bad guy was cool. I think that the uh, the network was cool. I think the the bits between Aram and FJ were were great. I mean, a lot of this episode is really really great television. Kudos to Sam for uh, for putting it down on paper. Uh, I think, like you said, the thing that frustrated me with the episode was at the end when Cooper was like, "Oh, and you're just going to come in there and fill the void with your stuff," and Red's like, "Nah, no. I'm good. I got other fish to fry." And I'm just like. Then what's the point of the episode? Right. Well, the whole point, I guess the whole point of it was that he took down the network knowing that it was in his inner circle and now he doesn't have to worry about it. He blew it up. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one way you could look about. at it. Sure. You can say like, because it's, he knew that it was a, the phones were the problem, you know, for the soybean bust, you know, that he wants to get rid of the network so they can make sure it's flushed out of his entire operation. Even if he's not moving in to take over, everything that inter Donato was taking care of himself. <laughs> right. I, I mean, that that's, you know, the, the real only way to look at it because he didn't steal the technology for himself to use. He's also the dread pirate Roberts now. Correct. So does he really need to get involved with these little, you know, organizations anymore? And he's also so blind. He's got blinders on to focus on who's to blame for killing Liz when ultimately we all know it's him. Which is how the phones got into the operation in the first place because he's got these blinders on and Marvin basically told him, make sure you're watching your back because of everything that's been going down. Right. And that's what makes him vulnerable. And that's kind of what's been played all along was that Red's vulnerability was he was so focused on other things being Liz that he didn't see all these other things coming. He had a blind spot for Liz. And now he's got a blind spot for trying to find out who killed Liz. Well, the other thing that made this episode really great is that music was actually back. We had two songs this week. First one was called Line of Fire from Jose Gonzalez. Um, it basically is at the end of the episode when Aram references a call from Red and H- Hetty uh, was actually doing the thing with uh, Red, you know, the little ritual um, that she never got to see before. Um, so I thought that was a really great song. I added that to my I have a playlist of my own. Uh, that I keep for like inspired songs of 2022 that kind of mean something to me. And I added line of fire uh, from Jose Gonzalez over to that playlist, which is really, really great. Um, but we yeah, started the episode song. with a classic, right? While Hetty and her soybean operation was taking on, we heard uh, open up the door, let the good times in by one Dean Martin. I mean, that's a pull from the archives. So uh, oh, a yeah. really great song. So if you want to hear those again, you can go ahead and find them. They're on the playlist, both Apple and Spotify. We have links to both playlists over on the website at theblacklistexposed.com. Well, characters this week, there really wasn't much for Cooper, Wrestler, Park, and Dembe other than just doing their job. Um, but much. I thought that Park and uh, Aram had a, a Park and yeah, Park and Aram kind of had a, a you know, it felt like they had like a little friendship brewing. That's something a little bit new, I think, that we haven't seen before between the two of them. What say you? Yeah, it was interesting to to try to see it like the way I saw it was Park trying to be Aram's inner voice. You know, we'll get into, you know, Aram, you know, this week because it was pretty much centered on him this week. Uh, But, you know, the other characters were pretty much wallpaper, you know, as I call them. They were there, but they didn't really do much. Cooper had the one conversation at the end with Red that we talked about before. Wrestler had, what, one or two lines. Dembe, I don't even know if he said anything this week, did he? He said Interdonado twice. <laughs> That's going to be stuck in my head now, and I'm going to blame you. I'm going to have to all go day long, to that song. You'll be like going to the grocery <laughs> store doing the Saturday chores, and you're going to be like Interdonado, Interdonado. Interdonado. <laughs> Planetary Interdonado. Oh, my God. I'm such a Beastie Boy fan. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, they really didn't you know, do much. and. That was the one thing I honestly was looking forward to because we really haven't spoken much about, you know, and in going into season nine. But that was the one thing I was interested in was that now we'll have more time. And we talked about it towards the end of season eight, too, is with Liz going out of the picture. Now you have more time to develop the other characters that can take up her screen time. Right. So and I thought that would be fun. And I think that was the challenge for the season so far because, you know, Aaron and I talked about it. Like the one thing that was great about this episode is we didn't go back to the past for the first time this season. Right. We're actually moving right. forward, which was great. Um, we did develop the characters, but we developed the characters in the context of the past. 
Like, let's start to develop the characters in the context of the future. Let's see Dembe use his FBI skills. Let's see Wrestler overcome his drug addiction. Let's see Park become another uh, better person, if you will. And I think this was really good for Park in this particular episode because it really showed her in a different light than what we had seen in the past from her as far as her crazy, you know, jump to conclusions, beat people up and throw them through windows, crazy blood face. You know, we're seeing park the more calculated, the more trainer leader, you know, confidant. Uh, she talks to wrestler about his issues. She talked to Rom about how he should feel about the situation today. I, I think that that park has really grown as a very interesting character. I think Laura's doing a really great job playing the role. I agree. I mean, because, you know, you think about it anytime you would normally think that, you know, Park would be the voice of your conscience, you'd normally be in trouble. <laughs> For sure. You know? For sure. <laughs> if she was in your brain, you'd be like wanting to kill somebody or, or beat up somebody. But now she's actually being the voice of reason. Which is really so I don't an interesting know if it twist. Has, I wonder if it has something to do that she's changed as a person because she got hit with the weapon. She lost a baby. If it changed her as a person. It could be. I mean, I'd it, like to see that story. Exactly. Like, how did she go through like that shift and how did she overcome her past you know, issues with her mom and her past issues with her time in Alaska and all that fun stuff? Right. Because the way they've written her character so far since, you know, we've seen her, you know, enter the fold. It, it, she's been a development, a work in progress. We only knew her as she had trouble in Alaska. Then we find out that she had, you know, a, addiction in her family. So there's more to her character that I'd like to see develop now that we have time to show these characters on the show. Well, let's talk about the big two that we focused on this week, right? Being a Rom. So a Rom and FJ's relationship. What did you think of that? I liked it. Um, but you know, I'd like to see a Rom develop more as a character because it, it always seems like he's timid. He shies away. He, 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 He has buyer's remorse, what I call it, instantly on everything. He makes a decision, and then he sits there and regrets that decision. Develop him as a character. He's been like that since the beginning, Yeah, you know, where he's been hesitant and shy and timid. He became an agent. We thought he'd get a little stronger. He has moments, but he's still not there yet. In in like in season four, right, the rail gun, and he shot somebody, and he's like doing the things he needs to do. I think a Rom going out in the field, you know, toilet water um, comes to mind right from season six. <laughs> yeah, there, yep. There's a whole bunch of like really great around moments, especially the one with the girl in the Faraday cage where in yep. the field, he seems a lot more confident. And then when he's back doing his techie stuff, it seems like the character's almost regressed in a way. Right. Right. But, he just hasn't developed emotionally on the show. I mean, he it, he doesn't even have confidence in his abilities. I mean, that's kind of what I read into in the final conversation with FJ was FJ telling him like, hey, you made a decision. You made the right decision. You're doing good things. Don't doubt yourself. And here he is still full of self-doubt. Yeah. And it's almost like it, you know, if there was a way to bring Navabi back because Navabi gave him the confidence. And now that since Navabi has yes. been gone, he's almost like gone backwards to his what he used to do. Right. You know, he, he, you know, if, if you remember when he entered the show, what was it? Wujan, like episode two or three, two or three yeah. season one, he entered the show. He was the tech guy. So watching him develop into an agent was great, but he hasn't developed as a person. He stood up to red. He put his foot in the door, stood up to, you know what I mean? He's had those moments, stood up to the but director. he hasn't fully jumped. Yeah, yeah, like we need more of that around because um, we need more of a forward person now. But I think because you have wrestler and Dembe, he still can't be that guy. What about you know, this conundrum? So millions of dollars given up to do the good work. Do you think Oof. do you think you could have given up millions of dollars? <sighs> you know, it it's hard to say not being in that position, but uh, come on, in today's day and age, you gotta take the money. You could still do good work after you take the money. Right. You could at least let the thing IPO first and then, you know, back out, right. And get your shares paid out, you know, for selling your half right. the company. Even if you had to stay for a year. Right. Doesn't mean you still can't do stuff for the FBI. Exactly. Correct. Because the technical, te- the technology was already built, right? He's right. His contribution to Greylock was the IP versus, you know, actually having to run the business on a daily basis. 
Right. And chances are he would be in enough of a position where he wouldn't be hands on day to day. He'd have a team working for him. What'd you think about FJ and his concept of forgiveness? I thought that was really clever about how you haven't said, I'm sorry, or you know, forgive you or whatever. And like Aram's going through the list. It's like, I got to forgive you for this and forgive you for this. And he's like, and you have to forgive yourself. I thought that was a really great moment. I liked it because it got me in the beginning because I was watching it and I'm saying, wow, this guy's really, he's a dick. Like he's making him apologize for all these things. Like, okay. And okay. And, and then at the end, I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. He was doing that for his benefit, getting to admit all his faults and then telling him, okay, let those things go. And I was like, that's a really cool moment. He's still being his mentor. And that's the one thing people don't understand about forgiveness, right? Forgiveness isn't about like, like, let's say you stole something from me, right? I could, I could forgive you for stealing something from me. But the reason why I'm forgiving you is not because I want you to feel better. It's because I need to feel better about it. So forgiving is actually allowing yourself to be forgiven at the same time too. It's a really, you know, it's a hard concept to say like, cause otherwise you like hold on to this thing and it just eats you up inside. But forgiving someone is for you. It's not for them. Yes. And what I liked about it was I, I thought they, and I could be wrong, but I thought they kind of took from what goes on in the world today. Whereas an apology is I'm sorry if I offended anybody, not that I'm sorry for what I did, not that I'm sorry for what I said. I'm just sorry if I offended anybody. Like, that's today's apology. So I thought that that was kind of a neat play on that, if they did that intentionally. All right, so let's talk about Red here for a bit. So he has Hetty in jail. Marvin comes in. What did you think about the hearing aid concept? I thought that was kind of cool. I I liked it. I liked it. He was still wearing it at the end when he was talking to uh, the other, the prosecutor. He still had it in, and I was like, is he just going to get used to it? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just have red. Imagine having red in your ear all the time when you're trying to like have conversations and just spader talking in your ear. Well, he's got to play the part, right? Because now that they've seen him with a hearing aid and he's got to always have the hearing aid. And so I thought that was a really great production moment because when he came back in at the end so, to show like, hey, I'm still actually the same character. I'm the same lawyer. I still have the hearing problem. So I thought that was really great production value added to the show to make sure that you got that continuity. Because I think if he came back without the hearing aid, I think it would have been an issue. Right. Cause who's going to question a hearing aid? Exactly. It's like, yeah, you know, guys, not gonna be like, uh, let me, let me, let me look at this. Let me check it out. Put it in my ear. See if it works. Yeah. What yeah. does it do? You're going to completely offend a hearing impaired, a deaf person. It's like, yeah, ex- ex- exactly. No, no, no. no. what do you think? what do you think of the test? Did Red need to test Hetty? Do you think that Red was worried about Hetty at all ever? I, I think with everything that's going on, I think that was just a, a reflex of that's just how Red rolls. If you want to be in Red Circle, you got to be prepared for stuff like that. Because didn't he do that with the other guy? Uh, what was his name? The circus guy with the trains. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he did the loyalty test. Remember, he brought the other guy into the bar and they pretended they didn't know each other, but Red knew they knew each other. And they were doing, he was running drugs on the trains. Right. Smokey Putnam. Smokey Putnam. Exactly. And he wound up killing him. So there's always a loyalty test with Red. If you make him doubt your loyalty at all. And if you have a chance to go into prison and say 20 years or you talk, most people are going to talk. I would agree. That's how the mob kid. That's how they took the mob down. That's how they did all these other things. Everybody just says, Hey, if I can save myself, I'm going to give you up. That's just the way it is. So in Red's business, he's got to test everybody, but it's an overlying theme. Enough is enough. I love that he's got a judge that he's able to get into the public prosecution um, angle so that he could get a lawyer in there that worked for Red. So that way things would pay out the way they did to do the test. So that was a little creative maneuver as well. Of course. He's got, I mean, look, if you have that many connections, you got to have connections to everything somehow. So how do they arrange again? Whatever money it takes, he said. They can just get it switched to a different judge's, you know, docket. Like that's how it works. It's just that easy. I, I don't think it's that easy to do. Do you think Red's unfocused? Do you think that he's spending yes. too much time on the list stuff and not worrying about running the business? I mean, we're not seeing it. You know, at least this episode, we didn't see him going into the list things, but we know that's obviously what he's referencing. You know, when Marvin's talking to him and everything else, we know what they're talking about. <sighs> 
But why why are we is this going to happen again? Red loses his focus on what's important because he's so focused on the past and so focused on Liz that somebody's going to come in and take it. We've seen this show already. Yeah, like, I just don't want to go down that road again. Like, what, what did he gain out of this? Right, we, we kind of chatted a little bit. Like, maybe he got it so that he could remove the phones from inside of his operation potentially. But at right. the end of the day, this didn't produce any kind of thing that would drive the find Liz's killer story. So yep. do you feel like the episode is like, yeah, it's great television and it was awesome and I had a lot of fun and the twist was great, but in the concept of the blacklist, does this episode make sense? No. Uh, again, uh, a complete agreement as a show on its own. Loved it. Loved it. It was cool. Like the concept, liked how the show portrayed it, like how it played out, but it didn't reference anything. We didn't, you know, we always talk about filler episodes and moving the story forward. This literally didn't touch on anything that's been any overlying theme. It had nothing to do with Cooper. It had nothing to do with, you know, Liz's killer. It was just a standalone episode that was good. It was all about Marvin, Aram, and testing Hetty's loyalty. That's really the, the crux of the show. All things that we've seen in the past as well. Yeah. So, it, it, how do you? This is the only thing that bothers me is you knew you were going to be off for this amount of time. They didn't have a cliffhanger, so they didn't have like a winter finale cliffhanger to come back to. So they just came back with this. Yeah, it's like you've you been should, off. You got to come back with something big, something bombastic, something yeah, really exciting, like or a, a nugget, something, something that sets up the next thirteen episodes for the rest of the season. Right, because the what was it? The last time we left Cooper, uh, he had gotten put on notice essentially that they know he fudged with things. Right. And to come back and not have so, anything about Cooper's story at all is nothing is, is weird to me. Like you ha- like that's yes. that's the thing that's driving the show forward is the Cooper mystery at this point. So we need to lean into the Cooper mystery until it's solved or at least have right. the thing I that mean, we're look, doing this week tie into the Cooper mystery. Unless they're actually going to go down the road of red investigating or trying to find out who killed Liz or how Liz was killed. Unless they're going to actually go on that, then you have to be on the Cooper storyline. It's got to be one or the other or both. Because you got to remember, like at the end of the day, this is a Netflix show also and the international markets. And if people like to binge this, which they do when the season drops on Netflix to catch up, it's like, you got to give me something that makes me want to come back next week. And right now there isn't stuff happening. That's making me want to come back next week. I mean, I come back next week cause I like the characters, but a typical viewer is looking for the hook, especially if you're watching it on a streaming service, you got to have something that's going to be like, watch next episode. Now watch next episode. Now. And there just right. isn't that and th- watch next episode. Now. No. And, and you know, and that, and that's part of it too, is I don't mind, you know, filler episodes or standalones or anything like that. But if you're going to have this overlying and you're going to drag the Cooper story for the entire season, which is fine. I'm okay with that. You got to drip, drip, drip in each episode. Right. You can't just drip, drip, skip a couple, drip again, skip a couple more. Like it's got to be present in your mind saying, oh shit, that's right. That story is still going on. Exactly. What's going on with that? Right now, I, I didn't think for one second, every time I saw Cooper pop on the screen for the two or three times, I was like, oh, here. No, no, he didn't. Oh, wait. Uh, nope. We didn't do that either. Oh, wait, we read. No, nope. Nothing about Liz. <laughs> so what was the episode about? So what was the episode about? Just about the network and getting it out of Red's thing and that somebody's infiltrating his network. Okay. But that's not the blacklist. Right. Or at least not the blacklist that we're used to anyway, as fans. And right. The, and and, and it, again, it, even without the mythology, the show is still there. You still run in the premise of the show. But again, you cannot just drop storylines for a whole episode. Yeah, because it's going to depend on you know which loyal fans stay, which loyal fans go. Because it's really the loyal fans that are truly the ones that made season 10 happen, right? Because we're still sticking at that point. Yeah, I mean, you know, and the whole time I would say through the first eight seasons, again, I, I, I don't try to be the voice of the fans. I try to be the voice of this fan. Through the first eight seasons, it was frustrating, but you were frustrated to the point that you really had things to hold on to. Who was Liz to Red? Who is Red? You had all these things, and they dragged it for all those eight seasons. And it frustrated the fans and the fan base and this fan. But when the answers came, I was good with it. I was okay with it. We'll move on to a, a new season. I'm in, Again, I'm invested in the characters. But where are we going with this? Exactly. It's not going anywhere. Especially knowing that you got 22 you know, like on train, the, the other end of the 12. Yeah, it's a train, 
we hop, we bought the ticket, we hopped on the train, but the destination's nowhere right now. Exactly. What are the signposts that yeah. are laid out for us to hit as we go along? That's the question. Right. You know, it's like that excitement when you're looking out the window of the train for 12 hours that you're taking to go see you guys in Chicago. But when you're looking out and you're trying to see the picture and you're saying, oh, we're getting closer. Oh, we're getting closer. But then all of a sudden the mile markers stop and you're like, wait, how far are we? It's a great way. You don't know. Great way to think about it. It just, yeah, it just, we don't know where we're going right now. And that's the frustrating part. But now I'm not seeing anything. All right, well, we want to take a quick second to say thank you to those of you that's supporting the show by going to Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash the Blacklist GSM. Special big thanks to our honorary Blacklist of Patricia. Also, special shout out to our task force members, Judy, Matt, Karen, Marilyn, Ryan, Cindy, James, Jens, Justin, Lacey, and Joni and Johnny, all official task force members. All these people received cool gifts from us, and you can get a cool gift as well for donating at the $20 level or higher. Do you want a cool t-shirt? Coffee mug? Come on. You know you do. You don't have to stay at the $20 level forever. Just a few months to get the cool gifts. And remember, we are on Fridays now, Fridays for the rest of the season. So the way the $5 level is going to work is that we're still going to try to record in advance. We'll drop the podcast, obviously, right after the show airs on Friday nights for the $5 patrons and then everybody else on Saturday at some point. So make sure you get in there. If you want the podcast right away, go over to P-A-T-R-E-O-N. That's patreon.com slash the blacklist G-S-M. Click the dollar sign in your podcast app or fill the fedora on the website and get some awesome rewards for yourself. Stay tuned. We got much more show coming up right after this. What if you could live your life without limits where every desire you ever imagined could be fulfilled? Experience Westworld, a show where every human's dark side will be revealed. After watching each episode, listen to Beyond Westworld, a podcast featuring humans and hosts from around the park, diving deep into HBO's illustrative narrative. Every hero has a code, and so do you. Download your itinerary and the show at beyondwestworldpodcast.com or your podcast app of choice. Hey, this is Amir. I play Aram on The Blacklist, and you are listening to The Blacklist Exposed. All right, so let's go on to Special Agent Intel. We got this one from Wendy Davies. She said, I enjoyed it. I love having Marvin on the show. I hope we see more of him this season. Since Dembe is out of the picture, they do need someone for Red to be his sounding board. I wouldn't go as far as to say Marvin has a moral compass, but he does tell Rudd what he thinks when issues arise. Yeah, and Weecha doesn't say anything at all, so... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he speaks when he needs to yeah. did you notice that she's got like a stance like i noticed when they were uh what was it in the in cooper's office i think it was and we just like standing in the background she's got this like arms crossed thing where she kind of like leans backwards it's like she just has like a a, a look to her right a a, a presence uh, i just found that it was interesting you know what they call that waiting <laughs> <laughs> they call that the wait she's just waiting <laughs> I do. I agree. I, I like Marvin on the show too. Um, you know, I wish he had more of a role before. I'm glad he did now, but I don't know. The dynamic just seems off. Well, it, it seems interesting too that after two years, like you have to remember, Red beat the crap out of him. A goat a go- kicked him a goat. in the nuts. With yes, a <laughs> with a goat. So the fact that like Marvin, I didn't beat you up, I beat you up with a goat. The, the fact that Marvin's actually here now, like being the confidant and trying to understand that. Like he's like the number two because Dembe is no longer the number two, I guess, in this regard. It, it's interesting to see, you know, Fisher Stevens do his work always. Love Fisher Stevens, but it's a matter yes. of you know, is Marvin adding value? And I think this episode was great with Marvin. I love the the lawyer talk. And it's like, you're going to go down and, you know, I hope that your bosses don't come down on you and blah, blah, blah. It's really great to see him on the show. I think we I hope we get to see more of him. Yeah, he's literally a criminal lawyer. You yeah. know, so I like that the guy tried to stick it to him a little bit, but he Marvin knows what he's about. He don't care. It's all good. It's all good. You know who wasn't yeah. good though? Who wasn't good was Taylor Lynn, Harrison, Michelle Jones, and Don Last, who were very disappointed in the episode. One even said, "Yawn." No. Uh, again, I can see it, but as a super fan of the show, I I liked the episode. The episode was good. I don't like how it fit in with the overlying season nine though. Yeah. I think there's a group of people that are just in it for red. Like 
Red needs to be bad. Red needs to be grumpy. Red needs to blow up people. Red needs to yell at people. Red needs to shoot people. <laughs> give me my ready bear. Ready bear, ready bear, ready bear. Where the rest of us are kind of like, just give me a good story. Like, I just want to escape for 44 minutes. Right. But, but have it connected to everything else that we've been talking about. Like Dorothea Carney, who said, was the storyline where Cooper is being framed for murder of his wife, old lover, ever resolved? Did I miss something? Question mark. <laughs> no. Yeah, you could have missed this episode and still been in the same spot. Uh, yeah, that's that's what my fear is. If you don't, even if you spend two minutes on it, it still keeps it fresh in people's mind that, oh, yeah, that's really going on. Because here you have Cooper didn't seem worried one bit about all this stuff going on. Yeah, not From nervous him, about losing I'm his job. I'm freaking out. Totally agree. You know, I'm freaking out what's going on because obviously all that I'm trying to keep undercover, somebody knows about. I'm running, you know, things to find out like, okay, my gun was fired. Okay. The bullet did match. I know that I'm being set up and I'm not worried at all. And I don't know if you caught this either. It just clicked for me too. That red basically told Cooper, there's going to be a time you're going to need me. And remember it works both ways. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a setup to whatever's going to happen with Cooper. He's going to have to get red involved in. I agree. To try to help him. And he basically told it to him. He said, yeah, this one was on me. This one was about me, but there's going to be a time you're going to need me. And, you know, one hand washes the other. We're all good. Well, I think that's going to do it for this week. Uh, real great episode. Nice job for Sam and Michael putting it together and uh, the team as always. So uh, we'll be back uh, hopefully next week to uh, figure out what the plan for the podcast is going forward. Yeah. And, and I'd like to see how everybody votes. Um, I think. Every other, I would vote every other week. I think you can get away with it because there's going to be you're going to be weeks where you're going to have episodes you're going to really want to talk about. All right. So, well, with that, we'll conclude this discussion. So now is the time to recommend the blacklist to your friend, your enemy, your neighbor, and when you do, please recommend they listen and subscribe to the Blacklist Exposed podcast. All the case profiles can be found at theblacklistexposed.com and everywhere great podcasts can be heard. And for more great Aaron and Troy hijinks and Roy, you'll even be back a few times this season in March. Follow us over on your favorite social media outlets. I'm at Troy Heinrichs, Aaron Smirks over there. Rory, what's your Twitter handle? I'm at BB Rizzler. BB Rizzler. That's right. And together we are all at the Blacklist GSM. Talk about the show, the podcast, or what your favorite cell phone provider is. We'd love to know, especially around the world, like what cell phone companies are out there that you guys use around the world. It'd be fun to find out. Yeah, that would be interesting. I'm used to the big three. And remember, don't uh, forget to answer the profiling question, which is more of a podcast poll, some housekeeping. Uh, let us know. Would you listen to the podcast if it was uh, three episodes at one time? Or would you rather prefer us to stick with the week by week uh, concept for the rest of the year? Uh, really just kind of seeing if we could try something different. Uh, if you guys don't want it that way, then we'll keep doing it the way we do it because we obviously do the show for you, the fans, not for us. Yes. So if you're interested, vote. You want to make a difference? Vote. You want to hear your voice heard? Vote. It's just that simple. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much again for filling in this week, Rory. And uh, yeah, we'll see you back in uh, mid-March for sure. Well, thanks thanks for having me. And I can't wait. All right. We'll see you next time, everybody. Peace out. Be well. See ya. Until next time, I'm Agent Troy Heinrichs. That's at Troy Heinrichs on Twitter. And if you want to learn more about me, just visit, well, about.me slash Troy Heinrichs. And I'm Agent Aaron Peterson. You can hear me talking about movies and TV on the Hollywood Outsider podcast, as well as remake this movie right. We are available at thehollywoodoutsider.com or on Twitter at 5popcorn. Be sure to subscribe, download the app, submit your feedback, but most importantly, keep yourself off of The Blacklist. The Blacklist Exposed is a Golden Spiral Media production. Find more of our great podcasts at goldenspiralmedia.com slash podcasts.